Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ciphering Weather. In today's video, we are starting off the month of November pretty busy, where it seems like it could be September out there. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltibits.com for Friday, November 1st, 2024. We're in the final month of the Atlantic hurricane season. Uh, November 30th is technically the end of the season, but the way this season's going, we'll see if we have extra time, overtime, in the month of December. But let's see what we got going on right now. The black arrow is Disturbance 1, pink arrow is Disturbance 2, purple is Disturbance 3, also Invest 96L. And then we have two tropical waves, one with a lot of moisture in blue and one in red, which is devoid of moisture right now, but does have a nice little low-level circulation with it. You can see all five of these entities that we just discussed with their vorticities here on the vorticity map. This is the spin and energy in the atmosphere. And here is that tropical wave that has no or any tropical moisture with it right now, but you can make out that low level swirl just a little bit with no thunderstorms with it right now. This might interact with Disturbance 2, uh, or at least the vorticity of the Disturbance 2 as it moves north and try and gain some of the, its moisture there. Here's the tropical wave behind it that does have a ton of moisture with it, so we'll keep an eye on this one as well. This is the big bad that everybody's been watching for the since we made our video last week on it. Uh, it doesn't look like much right now, uh, but this is Disturbance 1. It's got the greatest chance of development uh, on all three of these systems that have a chance right now. It's got a 30% chance, according to the National Hurricane Center, over the next two days, and a 70% chance of developing over the next seven days. Now, it's... Best chance is because it could be combining its strengths with Disturbance 2, which we have here. Its low-level circulation is near Puerto Rico, but it's tr pretty stretched out. You can see more vorticity uh, is going to be growing with the thunderstorms along this frontal boundary, it looks like, uh, to its north and east. And that also could uh, lend some of the strength to that other tropical wave that has no moisture right now. So here is Disturbance 1's chances over the next two days at 10%, as well as over the next seven days as it moves westward and interacts with Disturbance 1. Then we have Disturbance 3, also known as Invest 96L now. Uh, potentially, we could see a subtropical storm form out of this one. It's already got tropical storm force winds. Uh, it's just got to maintain a warm core which it could do uh, and detach itself from the frontal boundaries. 40% chance of doing so over the next two and seven days as it continues to move eastward towards the uh, Iberian Peninsula. Model intensity, like I said, shows it's already at tropical storm strength. It's just a matter of detaching itself from that frontal boundary. And Let's look at the GFS model to see where this storm can go and, and how strong they can get. So again, black is Disturbance 1, pink Disturbance 2, purple Disturbance 3, and then red and blue are our tropical waves. Still have a ton of uh, warm waters out in the Atlantic, even though it's uh, this late in the season. It's well above average, as you can see here. In terms of our four lower levels, we have, they're all in a vicinity of tropical development. Our purple storm is on the border of potentially subtropical development. Waters aren't quite as warm, but cold air aloft, thanks to this upper level trough, could uh, allow this thunderstorm activity to maintain itself to become subtropical, a hybrid of a tropical and, an, and a nor'easter type storm. Wind shear environments around all these storms is pretty low, and they have all of their moisture intact except for our red tropical wave embedded in some dry air at the moment. Moving this forward to two days from now to Sunday, November 3rd, we start to see the interaction between Disturbance 1 and 2 in black and pink. Uh, potentially, we see Disturbance 3, 96L, its best chance for development between 
uh, today and Sunday is shown here before moving into much cooler waters as it approaches Spain and Portugal. And then we see our first tropical wave in red interacting with that stretched out vorticity uh, coming from Disturbance 2. And nothing really happening with our other blue tropical wave at the moment. Upper level environments are starting to see some of that upper level ridging take place with Disturbance 1 in black. When, if that takes hold, you can see the wind shear decreasing, which will protect it from the subtropical jet just to its north and maintain its moisture bubble. But because it's becoming the stronger of the two out of Disturbance 2 in pink, this one could be taking over, which you can see here on day four by the time we get to Tuesday, November 5th. Disturbance 1 is a tropical storm making landfall with the south, southeastern portions of Cuba. So Jamaica, Cayman Islands, Cuba, Haiti, you all need to be watching this storm. And then we have our two tropical waves still lingering around. And we also have um, 96L making landfall at the northeast coast of Spain at this point as well. Up-level environment shows a up-level ridge trying to conform and protect itself over Disturbance 1. It's really stretched out, but it's there. And then we have an up-level ridge over the tropical Atlantic by our blue tropical wave. But it's on the front edge of it, so it's not showing much signs. And then we have an upper-level trough trying to eat away at our red tropical wave. So we have light... We have wind shear for those two tropical waves and low wind shear for disturbance one. But their moisture is still intact at the moment, at least on the models. Then we get to a week from now and we see disturbance one has moved its way into the Gulf of Mexico, just north of the Yucatan Peninsula. Maybe a hurricane at this point. Still too early to say, but we're seeing it stay away from the United States. Maybe the southern tip of Florida could get brushed by, depending on how strong the storm gets and how strong that high pressure wants to maintain itself over the southeast United States. Uh, could be a run for its money, but this is a week out from now. We'll see what happens. Our red tropical wave interacting with that moisture has potentially on this model run developed into a tropical storm potentially near the Turks and Caicos. And then we have the blue tropical wave still lingering outside the Caribbean and another maroon tropical wave behind it. Uh, so the vorticities are there. We'll keep an eye on all of them. Let's look at the European model. You can see quite nicely how disturbance one and two merge together and they head the, towards the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, but not as strong as you see on the GFS model. We see on the top left of you, top right of your screen, not much with Invest 96L detaching itself. Uh, so that's a weakness there. On uh, so that's why we're only at 40% potentially, and not much happening with our tropical waves on the European model. But it does show potential uh, near Hispaniola for our red tropical wave to develop, so we'll still keep an eye on it. Here's the ensemble models showing where all these storms could go over the next seven days. So we'll keep an eye on Disturbance 1. This one looks to be the biggest threat uh, to the Caribbean islands, potentially the southern portions of Florida, and then we'll see what happens when it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. Disturbance 2 likely will combine with Disturbance 1, but still bring rain uh, heavy rains as it does so to the Caribbean. Invis 96L will bring some impacts to Spain and Portugal, but uh, it's got a small chance over the next 24 hours to become a subtropical storm potentially. And then we'll monitor the tropical wave one and two to see if they develop as they get closer to the Caribbean islands next week. Next theme on the list is Patty, and then after that would be Raphael. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on the Ciphering Weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. 
and if you do in like detail with the breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.